These videos are from my trip to Rosendale, New York. This stop on the day trip was over on the Walkill River in Esopus. Perrine's Bridge spans, as I said, the Walkill River. On the east side is Esopus, and on the west side is Rosendale. The bridge was authorized for construction in 1834. At the time of construction, it cost $2,200, 15 of which was put up by the state, and the remaining 700 was provided for by Ulster County. Many people think that covered bridges are covered to prevent snow from falling on them, so they didn't have to be plowed. But that's not the case at all. A covered bridge is covered to protect the inside structure. A basic uncovered wooden bridge of the time period would last somewhere between 5 to 10 years. When Perrine's bridge was constructed, it was expected to last between 20 and 25 years. Since construction finished in 1835, I'd say 185 years is pretty good. Perrine's Bridge is the second oldest covered bridge in the city of New York, second only to Hyde Hall Bridge in East Springfield. What makes Perrine's Bridge architecturally special is it's the oldest wooden arch suspension bridge in the state. What that means is that these wooden arches that span the length of the bridge are what's holding the entire structure up. The wooden arches are mounted in these blue stone and cement abutments, and the arch keeps everything else up. The bridge was built by Benjamin Wood to connect the cement industry of Rosendale and the hamlet of Rifton in the town of Esopus. In later videos, I'll talk about the importance of both towns independently. The name of the bridge comes from Mr. James Perrine, who ran a tavern in on the Esopus side of the river, and at the time, the area was known as Perrine's Bridge. And back to snow and covered bridges. James's son was the snower for the bridge. In the 19th century, it was much easier to travel by horse-drawn sleds and carriages, so the floorboards of the bridge would be covered with snow for ease of travel. The bridge was closed for vehicular traffic in 1930. If you're interested in learning more about local history focusing on industry, the trades, and the people that made it, please like and subscribe.